Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, September 28th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And via the Zero Day Initiative, uh, Yudo Maeda from Cyber Defense Institute uh, released details regarding a vulnerability in Trend Micro's server protect. CVSS score is 9.8 and the vulnerability is an authentication bypass vulnerability. To exploit the vulnerability, an attacker would have to have access uh, to the server protect uh, console because that's well where the vulnerability is located. And Trend Micro has already released updates for this product. Well, it's time to talk in a little bit more detail again about a problem with Let's Encrypt certificates that I have mentioned in the past. And that's that one of the root certificate authority certificates being used to validate Let's Encrypt certificates is going to expire at the end of the month. Of course, Let's Encrypt has been aware of this and uh, has been uh, taking uh, measures uh, to lessen the impact by cross-signing their certificates with a second uh, root certificate. That's the ISRG root X1 certificate. But of course, there are old operating systems that do not trust this newer certificate authority because, well, at the time when the operating system was released, this authority wasn't around yet and these operating systems have not received the necessary updates to their root certificates. Now, we're talking very old uh, operating systems here. For example, Android devices, as far back as 236, according to Let's Encrypt, will continue to work. Browsers like Firefox also got their own updates and pretty much any operating system that can get any kind of update will have the new root certificate installed. And of course it has to support the algorithms being used by the new root certificate, which uh, could, for example, operating systems like Windows XP uh, could also run into trouble, but well, uh, they're in trouble anyway for other reasons. The one thing that may uh, hit uh, server operators uh, a little bit by surprise is that you have to double check your web server uh, configuration or any server really that offers a TLS, what certificate chain it supports. Typically with the certificate that you're sending to the client, you're also including some kind of signing a certificate and double check that that doesn't expire uh, on September 29th or 30th. So probably the easiest way to test that is uh, go to zellapps.com and check your site. It will uh, display any additional certificates that you're offering in addition to your own certificate. So these are the signing certificates and uh, it will also display the uh, validity of uh, these certificates when they expire. If they expire in 2024 or 2025, then you're good. But well, if they expire on September 29th or 30th, 2021, then you have a problem and you have to update your TLS configuration. So if you note any certificate issues uh, on those days, uh, that's possibly the reason impact is supposed to be minor. If you're using a current uh, Let's Encrypt Acme clients, for example, they should have already taken care of that for you. But uh, ever so often you have people running old clients or uh, updating certificates still manually. And that's sort of what gets you into trouble here. And security company Threat Fabric is reporting that uh, they're seeing a new Android uh, banking malware for a sale that they're calling Ermac. According to Threat Fabric, a botnet that uh, was built using this malware is currently uh, for a sale by a threat actor that has done similar things in the past. And apparently, Ermac is uh, pretty much uh, what uh, used to be Cerberus in the past. Apparently, uh, the attacker here mostly updated some of uh, the encryption being used for the command control channel, likely uh, to throw off some of the signatures developed for the older versions. Pretty rich feature set here, like, for example, being able to forward calls or send SMS messages, pretty much sort of anything that you kind of need in order uh, to, for example, inject and intercept uh, banking logins. 
And QNAP fixed three different vulnerabilities in its QVR software. That's uh, the video recorder software that comes optionally with uh, these uh, devices. The code injection vulnerability may be used in order to run arbitrary commands by an attacker. And of course, uh, these devices, not just from QNAP, but from other vendors uh, as well, have of course uh, been targeted by ransomware in the past. Update your firmware and that should take care of it. Updates are also provided for end of life devices. And then of course, you can always turn off the software and uninstall it if you don't need it. Well, that's it for today's. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.